Hi, and welcome to the Inquendor Guitars Workshop and another part in the video series where I show you how I make one of my guitars. In this episode I'm going to do the neck joint. I'm going to route the neck pocket, carve the heel some more for the neck, and probably do the headstock veneer with the Inquendor Guitars logo inlay. So, yeah, let's get busy. Any routing I need to redraw my center line on the guitar body, check the neck, and yeah, redo all the center lines, double check them before I do anything. And you might hear some background noises in this video. I really had to open my door, it got way and way too hot here in the workshop, and even with the studio lights and all. I'm already sweating and I haven't done anything yet. So my apologies for any background noises, uh, mostly coming from my pond. So my apologies for that. Yeah, let's get started by drawing in the center line. Here's the center line on my body. I need to transfer it over the edge. But there's an old line here still. I'm going to erase it. A little square. It's one center line. Let's spread the neck. I can't emphasize enough how important your center line is on your guitars. Uh, yeah, the whole alignment of all the components depends on a good center line. So check it, double check it, triple check it before you commit uh, to anything, just to make sure your alignment is perfect from tuner to bridge. Yeah, this seems correct. Now, let's get some clamps and start clamping up and dry fitting the neck. This is a tricky part when you're alone <laughs> because you're a couple of hands short to clamp it down. I don't tighten this clamp all the way, it's just that it holds the neck in place. So I can do some fine adjustments. And this is a bit of a finicky process, it's a lot of adjusting back and forth until I'm happy with the positioning. And I'm going to get some guides to help me to do this. So you don't have to tighten the clamp all the way down, it's just tight enough that it holds the neck in place somewhat and that I still can do some adjustments. And to help, and to help me align the neck perfectly to the center line, I'm using a, two of these aluminum strips, of which I know they're fairly straight and at least straight enough. And I clamp them to both sides of the heel and, and now I can measure the distance between each of these ends of the profile and the center line and using my uh, handy protractor. But first I'm going to draw in a line perpendicular. I almost forgot. Always perpendicular. I noticed it's somewhat of a frequently reoccurring theme in my videos, mentioning the word perpendicular. 
Maybe that's because it's one of the more fancier English words I know. <laughs> Who knows? <coughs> so, and this line now helps me to make sure I made the correct measurements. So, let me get a small clamp. So, clamp these two to the side of the heel. And now I can make some fine adjustments to the neck to make sure these two points are equal distance from the center line. Because that means that my entire neck should, in theory, be in line with the rest of the guitar. And I'm using just a very small hammer to make these adjustments. Thirty-five, forty-eight. So it has to move a little, and it has to shift over entirely now. Yeah, there are all kinds of jigs and such um, you can make and you can think of to make this easier. Um, this is just one of the methods and it's a method I use. Uh, not Probably not the most time efficient, but hey, it works and it's cheap and it doesn't take up too, uh, that much space. That's 30, 34. Let's get it somewhere close. 31. Yeah, I think it should be 31. And what I'm doing now, I'm going to mark approximately, I need my other pencil. Here it is. I now know that it should be 31 millimeters on each side approximately. So I'm going to mark that out real quick and now I can adjust everything and I have a little bit of a reference to return to each time I make an adjustment and I need to tighten this up just a little bit more it's a bit too loose and of course uh, the downside is uh, where the clamp is pressing down is now the pivot point so the center line will ever so slightly shift when doing these adjustments. So I have to make an adjustment, uh, recenter it, uh, and doing this back and forth until I'm satisfied. And yeah, the entire neck is dead center and with the rest of the body. Keep checking the overhang. I should be set, it should be aligned, and now comes the scary part, attaching some templates. So I have to very gently remove these guides. And I've got a couple of pieces of board, uh, multiply in my case, uh, of which I'm sure I've got a very straight edge on at least one side and I can stick these to the guitar body using again masking tape and super glue and this gives me an exact template for the heel of my neck on the exact spot I need my neck pocket so yeah so I'm going to grab some masking tape and super glue I'm going to stick these templates to the body I use two strips of masking tape because yeah, the last thing you want is your template shifting while routing the neck pocket. It's one of the most crucial routes on the entire guitar. Uh, so yeah, I had them move only once. Of course it's fixable, but yeah, better safe than sorry. 
and ever since I had my templates move on me, uh, yeah, from that point on I'm always using double strips of masking tape. So I've got all my templates stuck in place, it's a nice snug fit. And now we can remove the neck. And it's already a tight fit. Drop it. And remove the clamp. Double check. That they're stuck, yeah, and they're stuck in place. I'm going to mark the sides and the end, just in case if one does fall off, I can easily, hopefully, easily um, place it back without having to do the entire alignment uh, again. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this to my drill press and remove a lot of this material and I'm going to set the drill press to a depth that I leave about 10 mils here at the bottom um, for support and the rest of this is all going to be removed on the drill press first and after having removed most of it with the drill press and unfortunately a bit I'm going to take my router to clean up the edges like with most routes. So I'm at the drill press and I've already set the depth stop so it can't uh, drill all the way through. And yeah, now it's just a matter of drilling out uh, as much of the waste as possible. And try not to hit your templates, of course. So I usually keep uh, between one and two mils uh, from the edge. And I check it by hand by rotating the drill if it doesn't hit anything and it doesn't. So yeah, I can start drilling these holes. Now the most of the material is removed with the drill press. I'm going to use some masking tape on my templates before I start routing. I've got a little trick to show you and uh, something I've also seen someone else do on a YouTube video somewhere a long time ago. And that's to make sure I've got a nice and tight fit is to stick just two layers of masking tape on the edges of my template. Of course I'm going to use uh, a bearing guided router bit to do this route. And by adding just two layers of this thin masking tape it just narrows uh, the pocket I'm going to create ever so slightly. And, and usually this gives me just a somewhat tighter uh, neck joint. And what I can do is First add two layers of masking tape to my templates, do the routing, do a test fit with my neck and if the neck pocket is too tight I can remove one layer, try it again um, to see if I've got a, a better fit. And this really helps in getting the perfect joint without much effort to be, to be honest. <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, scalpel blade. I 
I've set up my router with a 16 millimeter router bit and a guiding bearing on the shaft side. And of course I applied two layers of masking tape to my templates. So now it's time to start routing. I'm not as much of concerned about the depth uh, just yet. I have enough materials, uh, I have enough material left over here at the bottom so I can adjust the depth uh, as needed for the eventual string height for my bridge. So yeah, let's start routing. So now we should have a nice neck pocket. Let's grab the neck. And as I expected, it's a bit too tight. So I'm going to remove one layer of masking tape and just route the edges once more. And I'm only removing one layer from the sides and I leave the backstop as is. It seems to fit. Yeah, nice and tight neck joint. And it seems like we have a guitar. Let's remove the templates. Yeah, maybe some cleaning up to do, but yeah, this is good enough. Um, in my experience, you don't want it, the, your neck joint to be too tight uh, because when you're applying glue uh, to glue it in eventually the wood will expand just a little and you get a very hard time pressing it in. Uh, so I think this will do, it's sufficient and we already, yeah, it already starts to look like a guitar. But of course, we still got an edge to deal with. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to measure the height. It's way too high, but I'm going to measure uh, how many wood I need to remove from the heel. And then I can do a fine tuning by routing out the cavity a bit more if necessary. I like to leave just an extra amount on the neck heel itself and ju just use the router to fine tune uh, the height and maybe um, adjust the heel a little to get the perfect neck break angle but it already looks great so yeah let me clean up the bench and i'll be right back to start working on the heel and set the correct height for our neck so I'm back and after routing the neck pocket it's time to get the heel of the neck to thickness and start working on the heel some more. And I have to think about uh, if I need a neck angle on this guitar. First thing I'm going to check the height I'm currently at and I'm going to take just a simple ruler, put them on my frets and I've already marked out my scale length, in my case 25 and a half inch scale, so that's almost 648 millimeters. And at this point, I'm going to measure the current height of the frets. And I have to add approximately a millimeter uh, for the string height. And I'm currently at 24 millimeters. So I have to lower it at, at least 12 millimeters. If I measure how much the heel is still protruding, that's 16 millimeters. So that means I'm going to need somewhat of a break angle for my neck. I have to lower this 16 millimeters, so I'm going to remove approximately 60 millimeters from the bottom of the heel and then I'm going to do the same and I think I'm going to use my one of my planes to give the heel a slight angle 
until I have the desired string height uh, at the uh, line where the bridge is going to sit. So I'm going to take this to the band saw to cut off the axis on the heel and I'm going to measure the depth of my neck pocket and it's 35 at the moment and just to be sure I'm going to mark out 37 millimeters so I leave it two millimeters too high and I can then I have some extra material left to plane it absolutely as flat as I can and, and for the last section if I still need to lower it somewhat I can use my router to just uh, deepen the neck pocket a bit more it's much easier to use your router uh, to get your uh, neck to the desired depth instead of trying to plane uh, the heel of your neck this is very hard to explain um, just in front of a camera maybe if you see me do it it makes more sense um, and of course explaining this in English uh, it's a bit hard so hopefully this all makes some sense uh, when I'm going to do it just to be sure I'm not going to mark out the amount I need to remove but I'm marking it out the other way around I'm marking out what I want to keep so I want to keep 30 Seven, so an extra two mils for planing and maybe some bandsaw drift. And like I said, I can always use my router to deepen the neck pocket somewhat. And this is what I'm going to remove on the bandsaw. So I marked out the section I want to remove. Time for the bandsaw. So after cutting off the axis with the bandsaw, I'm going to plane it down to this line and this line is drawn out all the way around and I can use this as a reference uh, for my plane. So I'm going to plane this surface as flat as I can get it. So yeah, let's get a small plane. And again my favorite plane. Might need a bit sharpening at the moment. I switched to my number four plane, also a very good plane. For no particular reason, uh, besides this was already sharp, so I didn't have to sharpen the small plane. I usually try to keep my planes and all my tools uh, as sharp as possible. But sometimes tool maintenance yeah, gets on the second place when you're doing a build like this. And sometimes I revert to just a sanding beam with 60 grit sandpaper. And I know I'm going to need a bit of a back angle on my neck. So that's why the line has disappeared here and is still visible here. So let's do a test fit. fits rather well and what I always like to do is uh, a rock check if I don't have any 
rock on the neck joint and there's hardly any so that's looking good still protruding a bit but we knew it already I had two mils spare ended up three well that's over that's fine check the string height again looking for 11 12 mils here it's almost 12 and where the nut is going to be I'm at 13 at the moment so when I lower the entire neck the three millimeters it needs I should be right where I want to be at 10 11 so I can also angle the heel just a bit so now I know I can lower the deepen the neck pocket by three millimeters And this is a bit of back and forward and uh, yeah you just have to do it in order to really understand what's happening i wanted this to be around a centimeter 10 millimeters i'm at 11 millimeters at the moment so i think i do a combination of both i'm going to work on the heel some more just to thin it down because I'm here at 37 mils and it has to be 35 so I'm going to thin this down a bit using my planes and the sanding beam and I'm going to route the neck pocket a bit deeper about a mil to really fine-tune the depth of the neck so I'll get back to you when this is done A job like this is very hard to explain mostly it's a lot of going backwards and forwards uh, between routing the cavity and to your plane or your sanding beam uh, to get a nice neck joint some pointers you have to uh, keep in mind when doing this is of course make sure you keep the right string height uh, at your scale length so where your bridge is going to be and of course that you have a nice and tight fit at the bottom of your neck joint and of course the size that you're yeah, that you have a very sturdy neck joint and yeah uh, other than that it's yeah, a case of keeping in mind keeping these pointers in mind and uh, and think about how you want to achieve them and how you can achieve them uh, it's very hard uh, harder than I imagined to explain this on camera so yeah keep those pointers in mind make sure your contact surfaces are nice and level so you get a sturdy joint and you end up with the correct uh, string height uh, at your bridge position yeah next job is to carve the heel of the neck some more so it's ready to be blended into the body uh, when I've glued in the neck and prepare the headstock veneer uh, tuner holes and of course the Unquendor headstock logo and that's what I'm going to do next See you in a moment. Unfortunately, I have to correct my past self. Uh, I just did a quick edit on this video and I had way more footage than I expected. It took way longer than I anticipated. So I have to shorten this video a bit uh, and I have to keep the carving of the heel, uh, headstock veneer, logo, tuner holes for the next episode. 
So yeah, keep an eye out for that one. So subscribe to my channel if you already uh, haven't uh, to don't miss out on that episode. Yeah, if you like this video, please consider leaving a like. I would really appreciate it if you did. And yeah, leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions, remarks, comments, you name it. I always respond to my comments as much as possible. Uh, yeah, and I hope to see you in the next episode where I show you how I finish the neck. And until then, have a nice week.